Hello world, this is Son of the Star, and welcome back to Redemption. Now that I've introduced you to Redemption, it's about time I showed you how the game actually works. Here's the general concept. Redemption is actually very much what its name suggests. The object of the game is for you to direct your forces of good against the forces of evil to redeem the lost souls that have gotten mixed up in the struggle. A player collects redemption cards and builds their own deck, which they use to play against another player and their own deck. There are many different types of cards in Redemption. Here's our first type of card, the Lost Soul. Every deck in Redemption has to have a certain number of lost souls in it. Whenever a player draws a lost soul, it gets put into an area of play called the Land of Bondage. Players exchange turns attempting to rescue five lost souls in their opponent's land of bondage before their opponent rescues five of theirs. But how do you rescue a lost soul? With these. This is a hero. How can I tell? Because of this. This is called the Icon Box. All cards have them, except for lost souls. The Icon Box tells you some really important things about your card. The cross, the sign of redemption through Jesus Christ, tells me that this card is a hero. A hero represents a virtuous character from the Bible. Isaiah is one of the major prophets in the Bible. In fact, the longest of the prophetic books has his name on it. This is Isaiah, and Isaiah is a hero. It's his goal to rescue my opponent's lost souls. So let's see what happens when Isaiah tries to rescue one. To make a rescue attempt, I place Isaiah into what's called the field of battle. My goal is to try to rescue the lost soul in my opponent's land of bondage. Chances are, though, Isaiah isn't going to just waltz right over and get the lost soul for free. I did just call this the field of battle, after all. In order to stop Isaiah, my opponent plays an evil character to block his rescue attempt. Evil characters represent characters from the Bible that act in ways that are contrary to God's will. This is Prophets of Samaria. This card represents a group of people who used divination to interact with demonic forces instead of relying on God's revelation. For this reason, Prophets of Samaria is an evil character that tries to prevent Isaiah from rescuing the lost soul. Now, hold up, you might say. Isn't that judgmental? What right does this game have to say that the Samarians are evil and Isaiah is good? It's not that black and white. All right, rest assured, Redemption recognizes this. Sometimes even the greatest heroes in the Bible make some pretty terrible decisions and sometimes people living lives of sin return to a life of virtue. On occasion, Redemption has actually made cards about the same person, but one's a hero and one's an evil character. Saul, the first king of Israel, had a deep desire to obey God, but more often than not, he was preoccupied by fear, pride, and envy, and this led him to disregard God time and again. And it's not like this was an afterthought. These cards were released in the exact same set. When Redemption makes heroes and evil characters, it's not passing judgment, but it is making a point. Isaiah, in general, was a holy man. I'm not saying he didn't sin, but what I am saying is that he tried to cooperate with God's will. The prophets of Samaria, in general, didn't care about God's will. They put their trust in their magic. I'm not saying they were incapable of doing good, but insofar as they turned people away from God, they were, in that sense, an obstacle. Whether or not you agree is a different discussion. In the meantime, respect that Redemption classifies certain characters as good and certain characters as evil based on which ones followed God's will and which ones did not. Let's get back to our battle. Prophets of Samaria is blocking Isaiah. Let's take a look at his icon box. The dragon, a symbol of the powers of evil, tells me that Prophets of Samaria is an evil character. Now that an evil character has been presented to block Isaiah, we have to determine what the battle situation is. There are four possible battle situations. The hero is winning, the hero is losing, the characters are in stalemate, and the characters are in mutual destruction. To find out what the situation is, we need to look at the numbers in the icon boxes of both of the characters. The number on the left is a character's strength. The number on the right is a character's toughness. For one character to defeat another character, his strength must be equal to or greater than the toughness of the opposing character. Isaiah's strength, 7, is equal to Prophet's toughness, 7. So Isaiah is defeating Prophets. On the other hand, Prophet's strength, 6, is less than Isaiah's toughness, 8. So Prophets is not defeating Isaiah. This means that Isaiah is winning. If the battle were to end here, Isaiah would defeat Prophets, Prophets would be placed in an area called the Discard Pile, and the Lost Soul would be rescued. However, the battle isn't over just yet. When a character is losing in battle, he gains something called Initiative. Initiative allows him to play cards that might help him in battle, namely, Enhancements. This is an evil enhancement. 
Evil enhancements represent actions, concepts, or things that further the cause of evil. The skull, a symbol of spiritual death, tells me that this is an evil enhancement. This is Goat with Horn, and it's not as silly a card as you might think. Goat with Horn represents a vision of the prophet Daniel, where he saw the kingdom of the Greeks manifested as a demonic goat with a long, murderous horn. How do I know all this? I actually looked it up. As you've probably noticed, there's this scroll thing on the bottom of every card. That scroll gives you the quote from which the idea for the card was taken. Goat with horn comes from the book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 21, so I just plugged that into Bible Gateway and looked at what came up. Evil characters can use evil enhancements of matching brigade from their owner's hand to help them block heroes. When the battle is over, all evil enhancements are used up and put in the discard pile. The color in the icon box tells you what brigade a character or enhancement belongs to. There are seven evil brigades. Black, brown, crimson, gold, gray, orange, and pale green. Prophets of Samaria is a black evil character and is losing the battle, so he has initiative to play Goat with Horn, which is a black evil enhancement. The numbers on Goat are added to the numbers on Prophets, so now Prophets has 8 strength and 10 toughness. Now we have to reassess the battle situation. Isaiah's strength, 7, is less than Prophets toughness, 10. So Isaiah is not defeating Prophets, but now Prophets strength, 8, is equal to Isaiah's toughness, 8. So Prophets is defeating Isaiah. The tide of the battle has turned. Isaiah is now losing. If the battle were to end here, Prophets would defeat Isaiah, Isaiah would be discarded, and the lost soul would not be rescued. However, as was the case with Prophets before, Isaiah now has initiative to play good enhancements. And what might those look like? This is a good enhancement. Good enhancements represent actions, concepts, or things that further the cause of good. The opened Bible, a good source for living a life of virtue, tells me that this is a good enhancement. This is Banner of Love, which represents the love of God for mankind, comparing it to an affectionate glance shared between lovers. Heroes can use good enhancements of matching brigade from their owner's hand to help them rescue lost souls. Like evil enhancements, they get discarded after the battle is over. There are nine good brigades. Blue, clay, gold, green, purple, red, silver, teal, and white. So Isaiah, since he has initiative now, plays the good enhancement Banner of Love. The numbers on Banner are added to Isaiah, so now Isaiah has 9 strength and 9 toughness. Now let's take a look to see if the battle situation has changed. Isaiah's strength is still less than Prophet's toughness, so Isaiah still isn't defeating Prophet's, but now his toughness is higher than Prophet's strength, so Prophet's isn't defeating Isaiah either. So now what? This is a stalemate, where neither character is defeating the other. If the battle were to end here, neither character would be defeated, and the lost soul would remain unrescued, as the evil character was successful in holding the hero off. In a stalemate, initiative goes to whichever player did not play the last card in battle. The last card was Banner of Love, so Prophets has initiative. Prophets plays Goliath's Spear, which brings them up to 10 strength and 11 toughness, which means that Isaiah is losing again. This battle has gone back and forth a few times, and both players are running out of enhancements from their hand to play. But Isaiah has one last trick up his sleeve. He plays another Banner of Love. This will bring Isaiah up to 11 strength and 10 toughness. If you look closely, you'll notice that both characters' strength is equal to their opponent's toughness, which would mean that both characters are defeating each other? What does this mean? This is a mutual destruction situation. If the battle battle ends now, both characters will be discarded, and the lost soul will be rescued. That's right, in Mutual Destruction, the hero lays down his life in witness to his love and trust in God. This is called martyrdom, and it is, in fact, a successful rescue. When a lost soul is rescued, it becomes a redeemed soul and is placed in the rescuing player's land of redemption. A player wins when there are five redeemed souls in his land of redemption. Did you get all that? Y yeah, you sure? Good, because now things get complicated. While this is how battles work in Redemption, it's also kind of not. See, every card that we've looked at so far has been missing something really important. 
Special Abilities. Special Abilities are additional text found on almost all cards in Redemption that greatly affect how a card is used. And anything can have them. Characters have them, enhancements have them, even Lost Souls have them. While numbers do have an important effect on battles, the outcome of the battle is usually decided by Special Abilities. Let's take a closer look. This is the hero Jethro. He has four strength, three toughness, and belongs to the Green Brigade. He has a special ability that reads, the player with the most OT male heroes in territory may draw a card. If there is a tie, do not draw. Okay, what the Christmas does that mean? Let's start with this bit, OT male heroes. We know what a hero is, and I assume you know what male means, but what's this OT nonsense? What is that? In Redemption, there are two abbreviations that you will see quite a bit, OT and NT. These stand for Old Testament and New Testament. The Bible is split into two major parts, the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures written before Jesus was born, and the New Testament, which details the life of Jesus in the early church. But how do you know what testament a card is from? That scroll on the bottom is not just for decoration. Every quote tells you the book, chapter, and verse the card came from. Look up the passage in a Bible, and you'll find out what testament the card belongs to. Jethro himself comes from Exodus, and that's about as OT as you can get. Okay, so what is a territory? In Redemption, your play area is divided into two sections, in play and out of play. Out of play, you will find the deck you built to play with, the discard pile where defeated characters and used enhancements go, the land of Redemption where your redeemed souls go, and your hand, which is where you keep the cards that you draw from your deck. Then you have an area for cards in play, and this is called your territory. This is where your heroes and evil characters go when they're not in battle. This is also where the land of bondage is, so your lost souls are also in your territory. Jethro's ability says that the player with the most Old Testament male heroes in their territory may draw a card. The special ability on a character activates as soon as it enters battle, not a moment before and not a moment later. So if I make a rescue attempt with Jethro. My opponent and I look at our territories and count how many Old Testament male heroes we have, and whichever one of us has the most gets to draw the top card of our deck. So as long as you have more than your opponent, you get to put a new card in your hand. That's pretty cool. You know, we don't actually know too much about Jethro. We know that he was a priest, and we know that he was the father-in-law of Moses, but that's about it. All in all, he was a good man and a good priest. But just like not all prophets are good guys, not all religious leaders are good guys. Case in point, let's say my opponent blocks Jethro's rescue attempt with... Whoa. What the... What? What? Why? 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 Why does this card look so different from Jethro? Yeah, you see, Jethro? You see that special ability? Was that difficult for you to read? Does it seem a little odd to you that the text that is imperative for you to read is not only hard to read, but is simultaneously obscuring the beautiful card art? Well, this is what redemption cards looked like for 18 years before Cactus finally decided to redesign the cards with a 2013 release of the 4th edition Starter Decks INJ and their corresponding tin, Rock of Ages 3. Now the special ability and the quote are placed beautifully within this lovely little box with very clear text that in no way detracts from the gorgeous card out in this game. It's, it, it, it's just so beautiful. Excuse me, I need a moment. So this is the Sanhedrin. In case you don't know what that is, the Sanhedrin was a conglomerate of two groups of Jewish religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The same guys who decided in their collective wisdom, or lack thereof, that it would be a good idea to kill God. Now admittedly this is a gross oversimplification of their position, but it is the reason why they are on the opposite side of this rescue attempt. So you may notice that the Sanhedrin actually belongs to two brigades, gray and black. Characters and enhancements can indeed belong to multiple brigades at once. In Redemption, Pharisee evil characters are gray, and Sadducee evil characters are black. So the Sanhedrin, which was made of both Pharisees and Sadducees, belongs to both gray and black brigades, which means that they can use both gray and black enhancements. Pretty cool, right? So let's have a look at that special ability. May band to a Pharisee, a Sadducee, and scribe. A band ability allows you to add more characters to the battle. The Sanhedrin can add a Pharisee, a Sadducee, and a scribe into battle. That's up to three new evil characters. But for now, let's say my opponent just adds two. 
Pharisees and Sadducees. Both Pharisees and Sadducees have banned abilities of their own, but let's say my opponent doesn't have any more evil characters. I mean, come on, Jethro is already at number 3 to 1 over here. All the evil characters in battle are treated as one blocking force of 4 strength and 9 toughness. Compare the numbers and you'll see that Jethro is losing this battle, so he has initiative to play an enhancement. By the way, let's say the rescue attempt is for this guy, this poor guy right here. The special ability on a lost soul is active as soon as it's played into its owner's land of bondage. When he gets rescued, my opponent and I will draw the top card of our deck, so that's kind of nifty. Anyway, I'm going to play an enhancement on Jethro. Let's say I play this thing, Coat of Many Colors. Take a look at that icon box. It's a reading rainbow. The rainbow in the icon box means that Coat of Many Colors is from every good brigade. That means that literally any hero can use it. You might also notice that Coat of Many Colors has no numbers in its icon box. Coat doesn't increase Jethro's numbers at all, so why did we play it? because of the special ability. The ability on an enhancement, like the ability on a character, activates as soon as it is played. Code of Many Colors allows Jethro to use good enhancements of any brigade. Cool. If you look at the battle, you'll notice that nothing has changed. Jethro is still losing the battle, so he still has initiative. He can play another enhancement now, and he will. Jethro plays Might of Angels. Check this thing out. Might of Angels is a silver enhancement, which means that under normal circumstances, it can only be used by a silver hero. And you know what silver heroes are? <laughs> but because of the special ability on Coat of Many Colors, Jethro gets to use it even though he's green. Might of Angels has an insane special ability. It says, discard all NT evil characters in play. Discard all New Testament evil characters in play. <laughs> this card is targeting all New Testament evil characters in play. That means all the ones in my opponent's territory, if any, all the ones in my territory, if any, and more importantly, all the ones in battle. And guess what? All three of these guys are from the New Testament. Even though Jethro's numbers are still lower than his blockers, Jethro is removing his opponents from the field of battle, so he is winning. This is called winning by removal. Since the blockers are losing, they have initiative, but they have a very limited kind of initiative. You see, when a special ability activates, it has to finish or resolve before anything else can happen. In order to stop everyone from being discarded, these guys are going to have to stop the ability on Might of Angels. But how do you even do that? Enter in three of the most important words in Redemption. Interrupt, Prevent, and Negate. These words will appear very often in special abilities, and it's really important that we understand what each of these words means. An interrupt ability pauses a special ability that is already happening. This gives you the opportunity to do something else, and then the interrupted ability starts up again. Conversely, a prevent ability stops a special ability before it ever happens. So, in other words, I can interrupt an ability as it is happening, but not before, and I can prevent an ability before it happens, but not after. Then there are negate abilities. The easiest way to think of a negate is as both an interrupt and a prevent. Negate both stops things already happening and things that haven't happened yet. So let's go back to our hard-hearted religious leaders over here. They're being discarded right now. They can't prevent Might of Angels because it already happened, but they could interrupt it or negate it. So now they play the evil enhancement Crucify Him. Crucify Him negates and discards the last good enhancement played this battle. This will stop the special ability on Might of Angels and throw it into the discard pile. Now as Crucify Him is resolving, we take a look at the battle situation and notice that Jethro is losing again. This means that he can play an enhancement of his own, 
and he will. He plays another silver enhancement, Glad Tidings. Glad Tidings does the same thing as Crucify Him, but in reverse. It negates and discards Crucify Him. Now, if Crucify Him is negated, that means that it no longer negates Might of Angels, which means that Might of Angels starts back up again, and all the blockers are getting discarded again. My opponent would have to interrupt or negate Glad Tidings, assuming he can't, all my opponent's blockers are discarded, all of our enhancements are discarded, and Jethro rescues the lost soul. I don't think I have to explain why virtually all battles in serious redemption games are determined by special abilities. They just give you such an edge. That doesn't mean that cards without special abilities are necessarily bad, but it does mean that it is much harder to win with them. In the original game, special abilities were exceedingly rare. But as the game grew, the developers realized that they made the game a lot more fun, a lot more interesting, and introduced a lot more strategy and creativity. Now, virtually all new cards have special abilities, and they are the life breath of the game. There is one last thing we have to go over quickly. Cards with multiple alignments. Just as cards can have more than one brigade, cards can also, on rare occasions, have more than one alignment. Certain enhancements, and even some characters, can be played either as a good card or as an evil card. These are called dual enhancements and dual characters, and they technically have two different face values. Remember those two cards representing King Saul from before? The latest redemption set, Cloud of Witnesses, created a dual character version of Saul, so you would decide whether or not to use him as a hero or an evil character. But we're not finished here. Not by a long shot. Characters, enhancements, and the battle phase are indeed the core of redemption gameplay, but there are a whole lot of card types that we haven't even seen yet. There's still so much redemption to explore, but that's going to have to wait. I just threw a lot of information at you, and you might need some time to let it sink in. Maybe even give some bits a rewatch. For now, let's end this video and take a break. Or if you're a real trooper, you can go right on ahead to the next video. Don't let me stop you. I'll see you in a few seconds. For the rest of you, this is Sign of the Star, signing off.